Hi guys, welcome back to Spelling and Word Study. My name is Mrs. Rhodes and I'm here to get you started on Unit 25, the OW OW diphthong. Please take a second to gather your materials. You will need your teal book open to page 155. You will also need some colorful pens, markers, or crayons. Remember, whatever I mark on my board, you should be marking on your page. Please save room for a key as well. All right, so last week we started learning about diphthongs. Diphthongs are tricky vowel sounds. They're not short vowels and they're not long vowels. Instead, they are um, two sounds in one. So when you start off a diphthong, you make one sound, but then you glide or slide into another one. So think about the ow sound. Say it with me, ow. Do you notice that your mouth starts off kind of in a short O position, ah, but then slides into a long U, oo position, ow. That's why it's called a diphthong. So last week we learned that a common way to spell that ow sound is to use OU. And OU is very helpful at the beginning of a word in words like out or in the middle of a word in words like sound or count. Well, this week we're learning about another vowel team that also makes that ow sound and it is OW. So I want to um, start by reading the list of words with you. And I want you to use your eyes to find the OW chunk in each word and use your ears to listen for that OW sound in each word. All right, please repeat after me. Clown, crowd, crown, drown, flower, growl, plow, powder, prowl, scowl. Okay, now the first thing I want you to notice is that we have a couple two-syllable words this week. Up until now, we've only been learning about one-syllable words, but I think you're ready to handle a couple bigger words. So the first thing I want you to do is choose a color and I want you to look at the word flower. Let's clap out the syllables. Flower. Do you hear how there's two of them? I'm going to slice that word right here with a vertical line. Flower. That shows me where my first syllable ends and my second syllable starts. I'm going to do the same thing with powder. This time I'm slicing after the W. Powder. In my key, I'm going to remind myself that that orange vertical line stands for a syllable break. Now, there's a couple reasons why I like to break words into syllables. Number one, it makes them easier to spell. Number two, it makes them easier to pronounce. And number three, it helps me notice patterns. So what I want you to do now is choose a color and we're going to go through our words and notice where that OW chunk is found. Remember, OU only shows up at the beginning of a word or the middle of a word. Let's see what happens with OW. In clown, it's in the middle. In crowd, it's in the middle. Same thing with crown and drown. Turns out that OU and OW can both show up in the middle of a word or syllable. Now in flower, it shows up at the end of a syllable. Growl in the middle, plow at the end of the word, powder at the end of a syllable, prowl in the middle, and scowl in the middle. Okay, so remember I said 
that OU can show up at the beginning in a word like out. It can show up in the middle in a word like sound. It does not show up at the end. Well, OW can also show up at the beginning. I don't have it listed here, but I bet you're familiar with this word, owl, right? A bird um, is an owl. So OW can show up at the beginning. We just proved with several examples that it can show up in the middle of a syllable. And we now know that it can show up at the end of a word or the end of a syllable. I bet you already knew this one because yes, we have plow here, but you already know how and now and cow, okay? So we already knew that it could show up at the end of a word, but now I want you to see that it also can show up at the end of a syllable. So if you're trying to spell a word and it ends with the ow sound, use O-W. Otherwise, it's going to be tricky. You're going to have to decide, hmm, should I use O-W or O-U? Well, there are some patterns that can help you. We'll talk about that in a second. But first, green box equals O-W diphthong. Okay. So last week, <clears throat> when we were talking about OU, we found out that OU shows up before um, things like O-U-N-T in words like count, count, mount, fountain, right? If you want to make that out song, it's sound, it's going to be O-U. It also shows up before O-U-N-D in words like sound, mound, hound, pound. Okay, so O-U gets all the out and ound chunks. Let's see what O-W gets. Starting with clown, okay? O-W-N is very common. We have down, town, frown, clown, crown, drown, and that's it. Okay, so over here, purple line equals own chunk. Okay, if a word is ending with own, use O-W-N. If it's using with out or ound, use OU. All right, let's also look for another common pattern, that owl pattern. We see it in growl, prowl, and scowl, okay? So if you are trying to spell a word that ends with that chunk, use O-W-L, okay? Now, crowd is tricky because right here, we're using O-W-D. But if I think of other words that end with that oud sound, like loud or proud, I'm gonna use O-U. So that's, that's a little tricky. Um, what else? I think that's it. I think if you can just remind yourself that that own chunk always uses W and that owl chunk almost always uses W, you'll be in good shape. Um, there is an exception here for growl and prowl and scowl, and that is the word foul. If you hit a foul ball, it's spelled O-U, okay? All right, what else do we need to talk about? Um, oh, let's go through our vocabulary and let's label parts of speech, okay? So let's start with nouns, people, places, things. 
are a noun. So a clown is a thing, right? You could draw a picture of it, you could touch it. A crowd is a thing, right? A crowd is a large group, like a large group of people, okay? Um, that's a crowd. A crown, something a king or queen wears on their head. That is a noun. A flower, something that you pick from your garden, that's a noun. A growl can be a noun. If you hear a growl, right? You're in the kitchen and you hear your dog growling at something in the other room, you can hear his growl. A plow is a noun. Remember, there are two kinds of plows. You could have a snow plow, which scrapes the snow off the street so you can drive in the winter. But then you also have a farm plow. <clears throat> and instead of scooping up snow, a farm plow digs up the dirt and gets it ready for planting, okay? Powder is a noun, right? Some women put powder on their face or you use powder with a baby. Um, a scowl is an expression, a facial expression, right? It, um, so it's an unhappy expression. So if mom says you have to put away your video games and go to bed and you give her a scowl, it means you have like a pouting, unhappy face. So all of these words are nouns. They're all people, places, or things. Let's look for verbs next. Verbs are action words, things that we can do or plants can do or animals can do. So I said that crowd is a noun, but it can also be used as a verb, right? If your teacher is showing you something and you all crowd around her to get a closer look, crowding is a verb. Um, crown can also be used as a verb. You have to crown the new king or the new queen, right? When you put their crown on them for the first time, you are crowning them. Drown is a verb, right? If somebody doesn't know how to swim um, and they fall into the deep end of a pool, they could drown, which means they die because they can't breathe um, in the water. Growl can be a verb, right? When you when an animal growls, it makes an angry noise. So growl means make an angry noise. If you try to take the dog's bone away from her, she will probably growl at you. Uh, plow can be a verb. When you use the plow to scrape up the snow, you are plowing. Um, even powder can be used as a verb, right? You powder your nose, you powder the baby's bottom. It just means you put powder on stuff. Prowl is also a verb. When you prowl, you, um, it's kind of like you're hunting at night. You're, if someone's on the prowl, or I think about like raccoons or other nighttime animals, they're like wandering and searching. Um, I'm gonna write, I don't know if this is the best definition, but searching for trouble, okay? If you think about like a burglar late at night looking for a, a car that's unlocked, or you think about animals searching for food at night, they're prowling, they're just like searching for trouble. And then scowl is an angry face, an unhappy face, but when you make that unhappy face, you are scowling. So that would be your verb form right there. Um, I think that's all I have for you. Let me just take a quick look. Uh, see if we have any different activities than usual. No, I don't think so. Oh, but one more thing I wanna talk about is I do quickly wanna talk about homophones. Do you guys remember what those are? Two or more words that sound the same but are spelled differently and have different meanings. So I told you that this kind of flower is something you pick from your garden, but this kind of flower is ground up from wheat and that's what we use to bake cookies and bread and all of that stuff. Um, that's all I see for homophones. 
Although I told you this kind of foul would be like a foul ball in baseball. There is another kind of foul spelled like this. And that's a word for chickens and hens. Those would be foul. That, that would be a type of bird. So over here we can just say uh, purple line equals homophone. All right, that's all I have for you guys today. Good luck, and I will see you next time.